So we'll be moving on to the next session. Mr. Olusheyi. Hi, Uncle Sheyi. So good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Okay. Welcome. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, before the before Uncle Shea goes on, I'll just pick, do a um, brief introduction. Uncle Shea is a chartered accountant who is also a teen worker. Uncle Shea has been working with teens for well over a decade. Uncle Shea is um, one of the teens monitors or instructors, camp instructors that a number of us met when we were teenagers who were one of those very active um, camp instructors. And then we came on to join him in the volunteer space. And he has been of great help, he has been of great service. He has worked with um, teenagers in schools, in churches particularly, and on an individual basis. He had trained teenagers, seen church teachers, counselors, school teachers on working effectively with teenagers. So we are going to be learning a lot from his storehouse of experience. Over to you, Uncle Shea. Thank you. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Nice to be here. Nice to meet a lot of people. Um, first, let me confirm. Am I loud and clear? Absolutely, sir. All right. So um, good afternoon. Nice to be with everybody here. Uh, we are looking at how to engage teenagers effectively, and I am looking at, um, or I'll be coming from the perspective of engaging teenagers in church. And um, it's, it's quite um, important that we learn to do this because um, church, to a large extent, is, um, is, is one place that teenagers get to go to, and many of us don't realize this, but it's it's actually the last line of defense for our teenagers. The first line of defense, are, are, like I like to put it, is the home. That's where um, they are taught values and their lives are put on track. And the second line of defense is society, school, family, family structure, that's extended family structure. And um, um, they will now have the last line of defense or the third line of defense, which is, which is the church which is where they fall back to. And so, um, whether we like it or not, we are going to be engaging teenagers, especially as teens church workers. Or um, if, if you grew up in the kind of church where I grew up, uh, in the Sunday as a Sunday school worker, if I can put it that way, you will, you will need to engage teenagers and um, you need to be sure that you are engaging them right. Now, let, let me put it this way. I have been like this, well, it is true. I have been working with teenagers for quite a while. And um, I have, I have um, experienced quite a lot. And I find out that um, I have a lot of teenagers that we met on camp. And uh, over, over a decade, and we still have good relationships. And some of them come to me for advice. They come and ask lots of different things, sometimes things that I'm not even in a position to answer. Why is that so? Because they've established a relationship with me that goes beyond any other thing that they have with anybody else, a, a relationship of trust. And that is where we stand with them. And so we need to be able to know how to engage them. Engaging them gives us an opportunity to interact with them and to impact, impart on them and impact them, um, I dare say, for life. So let's look at this scenario quickly. You've prayed, you've prepared your message, and you've prayed again, and then you've panicked, you've fainted, and then you've prayed again, and uh, now you have to face your teenagers. What do you do? You might have to present a message. You might have to handle um, some part of service. You might, be you, might you might be having to do some um, open, open class in um, counseling session, okay? And so, so what do you do in order to get their attention and get your message across and then build a relationship with them where the time you spend with them is time well invested. So I would say quickly, um, to engage with teenagers, you have to connect with them. 
and to connect with them, it takes a lot. A lot is an acronym of four words, and I'm going to look at them one by one, and then we're done. So we have A, then we have L, then O, then C. So let's start with A. To engage with your teenagers, you have to ask questions. You have to ask questions. You have to find out about them. Find out about their likes, their dislikes. Find out their needs. Find out their wants. Find out their hobbies. Find out about their culture, the kind of music they listen to, the kind of movies they watch, the kind of um, books they read, okay? Um, asking questions includes um, the whys and their why. All right, so I was saying that to engage the teenagers, you have to connect. And to connect with them, it takes a lot. And the A part in a lot is you have to ask questions. Find out about them. Find out about their whys and their what's. Why do they do the things that they do? Why do they listen to the kind of music they, the music they listen to? Why do, why do they dress the way they dress? Why do they talk the way they talk? Why do they look the way they look? Okay? Get interested in the things that interest them. Their music. Their movies. Okay, what do they watch? What do they read? They read comics? Do they watch animes? Uh, which are uh, um, cartoons, but not for, not for children, but teenagers. What are the sports they're interested in? You see, it is in getting interested that you find out things about their interests that influence and shape their decisions, their words, and their actions. There are certain things that your teenagers will do, and um, if you have taken time to find out about the things that they do, you would understand why they do them. So uh, you have a teenager that listens a lot to musicians like Linkin Park and other rock musicians, especially the ones that have um, a rebellious bent to their songs, then it would give you an idea of why your teenager is so defiant in a lot of things. And you would know how to address them, okay? So when you get interested in them, you find out these things. When you know these things, you cannot independently compare them against the truth that you know. Now, take note, you are not coming out as an I know it, no. You are coming out to learn about them. Then you will now compare it with the truth that you know, okay? So when you ask questions, it lets you know why, again, why are they in church? You have, you have a church of teenagers and why are they in church? Asking questions lets you know these things. Some of them are there because mommy and daddy are in church and there's nothing else that they're doing after in church. Some of them are in church because there's nowhere else for them to go on Sunday. Some of them are in church because um, it's the only place where they, they get to be free. So when you ask questions, you, you get to know these things. Teenagers have their specifics and the generals of why they are in church. And a lot about your environment that will help you reach them will be discovered in asking questions, okay? So that's in the A. Then we have the L, listening. Or oh, let's put it this way. Pay attention to them. Pay attention to what they say. Pay attention to what they don't say, okay? Pay attention to what they do and what they don't do. Okay? Not everything starts or ends in church. Sometimes it is what they do in between that is the key to engaging them. So you, 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 you pay attention to them. Whether it's, off, now, whether it's offline or it's online. Like Mrs. Adelio said earlier, it starts with the offline. And then you can now use the online to... Um, how do I put it now? Compen no, not compensate. To, as an add-on to what you've done offline. So when you are paying attention to them, find out. You, 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 you need to, when I say that, you, 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 you need to pay attention to all the things they do. Social media becomes very key. What are they posting on Facebook, for example? What are they commenting on Facebook? What do they, where, where, what, what, what pictures are they putting up on, on WhatsApp, on Instagram? Okay, 
what are the things that they post on social media? It gives you an idea of who they are, what they are, what they are going through. You can find out by paying attention to them um, who has a hustle during the week. You think all your teenagers go to school? Some of them get to have to work during the week. Okay? Well, how many of them work a job? How many of them sell things to make money? I have a couple of them that are on campus, they're in university, and they sell things to, to, to make money while they're in school. How many of them are interested in becoming a music artist? How many of them want to become an actor? Okay? Many of these things you will get as hints in their social media posts. And so you need to pay attention. Then after listening, you have to observe. Observe their general and specifics and take note. It may lead to more questions and listening, so go ahead. You see, observing lets them again know that you are paying attention and it shows them that you are really interested in them. Um, someone said something and I agree. Um, um, teenagers really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so when you observe them and you bring the things you observe up in conversation, they know that you're paying attention to them. I, I was talking to a teenager once and um, after, after a couple of I mean, minutes of talking, the following Sunday, after like four weeks, I like, you talk about a lot of things, but I've never heard you talk about your dad. What's up, what's up with your dad? Okay. And then we started talking. Why? Because it was clear to him that I, I was very, I was actually very interested in him. Okay. So it shows that you are really interested. All right. And then it opens them up to you because they really don't care how much you know, you got a PhD or whatever. No, they're, they're, not, they're not interested. They want to be sure first and foremost that you actually do care. Then finally, let's look at talking. A L O T, a lot. We have talking, or let's use that communicating. Talk to them, get feedback. Okay? In church, talk to them. Don't just teach, don't just preach at them. Talk to them, engage them, have conversations, get some time with them. Okay? Get feedback from them. Ask questions. They try and find out what they very, very observant of the vocal and non-vocal communication too. Okay, be very clear about that and uh, make sure that it's working. Sorry, I just got a prompt on my internet connection. Okay, I think it's, it's back on now. All right. So get the message across to them. I, I'm rounding up now. Get the message across to them that you are finding out about them and that you care enough to find out about them. Communicate with them. Okay. Let, let them know that they can approach you. Let them know that they, they can come to you. I have, I have teenagers that we talk physically when we see, we talk online. Some of them will send me messages and say, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Shay, I have not, you've not responded in a while. What's going on? What's happening? You know, because we, we have that type of communication. Okay. I remember, I remember a song, Gangster Paradise, the secular song. We said something, the, the line is very, very profound. It says that they say I got to learn, but there's no one here to teach me. If they don't understand me, how can they reach me? You need to understand your teenagers. And to do that, you need to communicate with them. You need to talk to them. You need to open lines of communication. Okay. Now, when you show that you care enough, then they'll let you in. Connecting with them is not going to be a problem. Engaging them is not going to be a problem. You can talk to them about any and everything. I have teenagers that call me and say, oh, okay, there's this guy that's interested in me. Ah, there's this guy that's been toasting me. I say, oh, come on. Yeah, we're scoring. Okay? Because they know that they are safe talking to me about those things. Why? Because I've never been a judge of character for them. All right? Now, don't be deceived. Teenagers do want to talk. Many people think that teenagers don't want to talk. They do want to talk. And um, you just have to be able to, to be seen as approachable by them, and then you'll be shocked about how much they want to talk to. They are looking for people to talk to. But if they don't trust you, forget it. They're not going to open up to you. Okay? And um, one of the things that um, um, I, I ran up with this, one of the things that Deepo started with uh, because of his school setting, of course, if we're in, in teens church and you're teaching them, um, please learn to use stories and scenarios. Let, teenagers like to imagine a lot. Okay, so give them a, give them time and space to exercise their minds. 
be very real. Whatever you do with them, whatever you're talking to them about, be very real. The ones that talk to me about the boy that's just said, they, they, they've heard about the, my, my crushes, my girlfriends, my exes, okay? And so they need to know that they're not going through this thing alone, okay? And then finally, please do your research. If you're going to engage teenagers, do your research, do your study very well. Um, you don't have to know everything, okay? But you, you have to know enough for them to know that, okay, they're talking to the right person. And when you don't know, please let them know that you don't know. And then um, leave with the commitment that I will go and find out more. And then when next we talk about this thing, we should be able to have a more informed conversation. At this point, I would like to come to an end of my presentation. And I hope that um, we've had a nice time. Thank you very, very much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Angushe. That was insightful. Thank you very much. Particularly like the part where you said um, teenagers don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So you have to observe and you have to show, you have to listen, you have to show interest in them. And as you were saying that, I just remembered something interesting that happened recently. Um, during the Bla um, Big Brother Ninja um, show while it was ongoing, a particular teenager of mine was always putting up posts about Erica. And I was just... I was just exhausted. I, like every single time post about Erica and all, most of those times I just wanted to roll my eyes. In fact, I actually did roll my eyes and I didn't know what to do, how to engage her on that and all. And then I remembered some of the teachings that we've had over time um, on reaching them. So I, I just chatted her up, like, oh, so what do you like about Erica? What is it about her? Tell me about her. And we just gisted. And there was a lot of gist about Erica and all. So a lot of times we have to keep an open mind, very open mind, even against our own personal um, understandings and ideologies concerning these teenagers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Shay. Someone asked someone sent me a question privately he said how do you get teenagers to listen when you're correcting them or instructing them how do you get another person follow follow williams said um how do you get i'm uh, sorry how do you relate with a teenager who does not share your belief i'm going to come back to mrs funke rather rather Uncle Shea, Uncle Shea, can, can you address the question of instructing teenagers first of all then mrs funke would address the question on relating with a teenager who does not share your belief. Over to you, Angushe. Okay. Um, sorry, can you take that the question again so that I, I, I'm, I'm clear about my understanding of the question? Uh, the, the, the question is, how do you get teenagers to listen when you're correcting them or instructing them, you know how a teenager can just be rolling their eye and they are, they are standing before you, but they are not really standing before you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So um, when, when you're correcting a teenager, I think um, first and foremost, your relationship with them counts. It, it matters a lot. What's, what's been the history of your relationship with them? Um, are you in a position where they believe that they can listen to you? and um, they, you can talk to them. I, I, again, um, correcting them should not be, I mean, even if it's done in love, should not be done in a way that puts them down. That there are ways you can correct a person and um, they're telling the person some sad truths and they're they listening to you and taking it in, okay? Once they know that you love them and you really do respect them, Whatever it is you tell them, they, they will listen to you and they will take it. Especially if they have seen you to be uh, acting in their interest and they have seen from past experience, probably with other people, that, uh, okay, Uncle Shea or Auntie Chidima is actually saying the truth. It might not be the truth you want to hear, but it's the truth that you need to hear. Okay, so, so that, that's, that's my point. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Angushi. It's important that they know that you're acting in their best interest. Very, very, very important. You must have shown um, interest in them prior to that. Okay, over to you, ma'am. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Angushi. God bless you. Angushi said, so if you let them know that you aren't expected to get the answer right, they may be willing to let 
Um, and we say please complete that so that people can capture and understand it before we run out. Thank you so much, everyone who attended this. We love you. Solid Foundation Ministry loves you. Chidima Regina and Bono loves you. <laughs> and um, we say thank you. Thank you.